I want to share with you a very important message that I have been preparing for some time. And you're all aware that we have an election less than a month away. And at the end of the service, you're all going to be given a packet. And Heather has worked, bless poor Heather, she <laughs> worked so hard to get things. She cut her finger this morning and then she got a call. She needed her, her uh, nieces watched. And so she's in the nursery watching the niece. She cut her finger over there trying to serve some food for the worship team and just, <laughs> but she's worked very hard uh, putting together this packet. And so it's for every one of you. I want you to each have your own packet because my message today is our mandate from God this election season. Our mandate from God this election season. And I want to encourage you that tonight is a debate at 6 o'clock. Tonight is a debate at 6 o'clock. If you can't watch it, we'll record it or find someone that will. Um, I don't know what channel it's on. I don't know if it's on one of the cable channels. It's on what? Okay. Yep. So watch it tonight. But I'm going to be talking to you this morning about the election. And if you have not registered to vote, you have till, I believe, the 24th to register. You can register online. You don't even have to go to a booth or a school or wherever it's going to be, you, you just can even just do it by absentee mail, absentee ballot. You can mail it in. And, uh, but there, uh, I just encourage you now is the time. Don't procrastinate on this. This is a very important election. I think, and I will give my opinion after 65 years on this earth, the most important election in 50 years. And so the word mandate literally means an official order or a commission. It's an official order or commission to do something. And concerning voting, God has given Christians responsibility. And I want us to look at the scriptures before I start getting into other things this morning. And I want to say, at, and I don't usually do this, but because of the importance, uh, be thinking about a question you will have about this election season. I really don't want opinions because, you know, every one of us have opinions about things. I just would rather hear your question about something maybe you're con not uh, clear on or the process or whatever. Please feel free. We're going to do this at the end of the service to ask questions because we want to make sure everybody knows what's going on. My, the Bible says my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. So if you need some knowledge this morning, you've come to the right place. But this packet that we've been working on so hard uh, will be given to you at the end of the service. Because if I give it to you now, you're going to start doing this. But I want you to hear what I have to say. The first scripture up there, talking about our mandate from God, our responsibility, says, and these are all out of the New Living Translation because I really want to make sure everybody understands that when the godly are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked are in power, they groan. The New King James Version uses the word mourn. Look at that scripture. When the godly are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked are in power, they groan. It's so important for us to see that the result of a government who's in the government has an effect on a city, our whole society, and um, it will give us either one result or another, rejoicing or groaning and just deep sadness. And I think we've experienced that these last eight years with the decisions that have made. Let me just say this right up front. God is not a Republican or a Democrat or a Libertarian or the Green Party or I can't think of any other party. He's neither. No person is going to save America. No president is going to save America. God is the only answer we have, church. God, if we don't turn to God, even though we might have a righteous person or righteous people in government, the nation is going south. 
or it's going to go more south. And I'm very concerned, and I know you are. The second verse is Proverbs 29, 12, just a few verses down. It talks about, if a ruler pays attention to liars, all his advisors will be wicked. Now look at that. If a ruler pays attention to liars, all his advisors will be wicked. When there is wickedness in high places, it has a trickle-down effect. It affects the CIA. It affects the State Department. It affects Congress. It affects so many areas when wickedness is allowed to go on and even deception and lies. You need to understand that. It is a trickle-down effect because the person in power will collect people who are like-minded. You understand that? I'd like to go to Romans 13, verses 1 to 7, because this is going to give us an explanation of what God said to us concerning authority. Jesus said this, Render unto Caesar the things that are, are Caesar's, and give unto God the things that are God's. But we live in a world where there is government. And when Paul wrote this, you need to understand, he wrote this to Christians that were living in Rome, under Nero, burned at the stake, being butchered, Colosseum. I could go on and on and on, not just in Rome, but even through the whole empire of Rome. But look what Paul said to these Christians that were in Rome. Everyone must submit to governing authorities. For all authority comes from God, and those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. So anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and they will be punished. For the authorities do not strike fear in people who are doing right, but in those who are doing wrong. Would you like to live without fear of of the authorities? Do what is right, and they will honor you. The authorities are God's servants sent for your good. But if you're doing wrong, of course, you should be afraid, for they have the power to punish you. They are God's servants sent for the very purpose of punishing those who do what is wrong. So you must submit to them, not only to avoid punishment, but also to keep a clear conscience. Pay your taxes, too, for these same reasons. For government workers need to be paid. They're serving God in what they do. Give to everyone what you owe them. Pay your taxes and government fees to those who collect them and give respect and honor to those who are in authority. Now, we all have a little check disclaimer list on our head. Every one of you do. We can say it's corrupt. It's too much. It's uh, wicked people in places of authority. And God, how do you expect me to submit to people who I know are wicked or taking advantage of things? We do it as unto the Lord. We do it as unto the Lord. Now let me make this very important statement. When the authorities tell me to do something that violates the laws of God, I will not do them. That's a very important thing I said. Because my allegiance is to God, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Word of God. I will submit and uh, honor, pay taxes, and do all of those things. But if uh, they ask me to do something that's honored, the Word of God, I don't have to do it. And that's coming into a conflict in this nation. There are many things I could say today, but I'm going to stay focused. Submission to governing authority, because we understand all authority is from God, placed there by God. And the thing that is such a reality to what Paul's saying is, if I rebel against authority, I'm coming against God, because God has instituted them. And the word uh, is talking about our yielding to them, so we don't have to live in fear. Let me give you an example. You ever speed on the freeway 
and all of a sudden you see that red light behind you? <gasps> what happened? What happened to that reaction? Why did we go through that? Now, if we're doing the speed limit, do you have to, would you have that happen to you? No. But what happens is, how many of you have ever gotten a ticket? Yeah? And so you look at that thing and you go, oh, no. Turn my Christian music down. I was just getting into this. <laughs> Their authority there. They collect taxes. They punish those that are doing wrong. Our position as Christians should be to honor and respect. Every time I meet a policeman, if I'm in a restaurant or whatever, here's what I tell them. Thank you for doing your job. Thank you for protecting us. Because if my attitude is one of rebellion, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Because there's a rebellion in me. The word submission literally means to yield to. To keep our conscience right before God. It says it for conscience sake. The taxes do run to government. I don't like all the things that cost so much money, but this is why you have the power of the vote. You don't like something, guess what? We pray, we're informed, and we vote. Re voting is our responsibility. It's, it's our seed. Your vote is, is a seed that God's given you to make a difference. And most of us just, well, it's politics, and I don't think God wants me to get involved with politics, and, you know, we, we just, we have some wrong thinking about this. Our voting is our, not only responsibility, every Christian, but it's our seed that we're planting in for right government, and we need to value it. Listen, someday it may be taken away from us. It may be taken away from us. The other scripture I want to put up there, and I'm building a foundation this morning of telling you and probably reminding you again of our responsibility as believers. Look what uh, 1 Timothy 2 has to say. You all should know this. 1 Timothy 2. Karen, let me see if I maybe made the mistake. Yeah, it's 1 through 6. 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 6. Let me read this to you. Did I give you the right scripture? I'm going to wait because she went to 2 Timothy. Pause. How many are registered to vote? If you're not, you need to be. Do we have it, Karen? She's getting it. She's doing a good job. Don't you like all the fall colors up on the screen? <clears throat> it makes me feel like pumpkin pie and Whipped cream, bowl of chili or something, I don't know. This is what Paul said to Timothy, telling Timothy, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Look at it. Ask God to help them. Intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives. Let's go to the next verse. And we go back, I blew it. Verse 2 again, I want to read. So that we can live peaceful and quiet lives. What kind of life does God want you to live as a Christian and actually for all of society? Don't we want peace and quiet? Peace and quiet, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives. Go ahead, Karen. Marked by us acting godly and with dignity. That's a peaceful, that's, that's what we want in society. Godliness. There's dignity in our leaders. There's the church being able to do what God's called us to do. This is good and pleases God our Savior who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. For there is only one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity, the man Christ Jesus, who gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. This is the message God gave to the world at just the right time, the gospel. But God has called us to pray for our president, to pray for our senators, pray for our city council, pray for our police, pray for leaders. This is our responsibility. God wants us to intercede and stand in the gap for them because they are on the front lines and we're asking God to save them, 
We're asking God to give them wisdom. We're asking God to make a change in the hearts of the leaders, policemen, fire department, city council, every level of government the church has to pray for. And if more Christians would pray for their leaders, I believe God would move on their heart. And because how many of you know we complain too much? We complain, we complain, we complain, and we find fault. But how many of us are praying? Now, this was written to Christians that when we gather together to pray and intercede. Of course, you can pray on your own for these things, but this is why it's so important. In fact, election day, we're having prayer here, nine in the morning. So if you are around, please come. Let's cry out to God for that day. Let's cry out to God for that day that he would have mercy. And let me just tell you this. We need God's mercy for this nation and for this, the next president. Because this, this is so much at stake. I, I mean that. It's so important. God wants men saved. He wants us to be the salt and light. He wants us to pray for our leaders. We have, a, I'm going to say it again, we have a right and a responsibility to pray, listen, learn, understand the people and the issues. I want to say it again. We have a right and responsibility to pray, to listen, to learn, to understand the people and the issues. And this is why God's people should not be low information voters. Now, there are Christians who just go, oh, I'm just too busy, I just don't really care, or I'm not going to bow at all, it's just politics and stuff. And what happens is, again, 30 million Christians stayed home or did not vote last four years ago. That is so sad. That could have made the difference. There are four people running. But let me assure you, only one person is going to get in the White House. One person is going to be elected president as well as people are going to be elected in the Senate, Congress. Hear me when I say this. Don't throw away your vote because you don't like the two main people. Well, I have a right to do that. I don't have to vote for Trump or Clinton. I don't like either one of them. That's not the point. Well, I like the other guy. Rest assured, don't throw your vote away. It's going to be one of those two. I don't like either one of them, Pastor. Listen carefully when I'm going to tell you. Don't throw away your vote by, I mean, again, I'm just trying to share with you my opinion. If you vote for uh, the Green Party or Libertarian Pro Party, and at least I don't have to vote for one of those two, again, you are still causing one of those two people either to be elected or not elected. It's coming down to those two people. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? So much is at stake. And one of the things that you're going to get in this is the party platforms. You really need to study these party platforms. What does the Republican platform stand for? What does the Democrat Party stand for? A lot of people don't study the platform. You will be shocked by looking at these platforms with what one believes versus what the other one believes. I'm, I'm serious. This is part of your packet. Study the party platform. God is not a Democrat or a Republican. People ask me a question about, you know, what are you? This is what my answer is to people. I belong to a party, but I want to tell you that first, these two things are first, and I appreciate one of the people running for uh, office that said this. They said, I am a Christian and I am a conservative. That should mean more to us than any political party. I am a Christian and I am a conservative. Before you go on any other place, whether you're whatever party you are. Does everybody understand that? We are Christian and we are conservative. And that should be the things that come out of our mouth and what we believe. The reason we need to study these party platforms is the person we put in office and the question I have is who is going to defend marriage between a man and a woman? Do you know? What about abortion? What candidate is going to stand up for the unborn? Do you know? 
What are their plans about our economy? We are $20 trillion in debt. Our money is going to just turn to nothing. And what's going to happen to our children and our grandchildren that put that debt on, the sh on their shoulders? I have been in other nations like Zimbabwe where when I found a $5 bill in the sand when I was there on one of my trips and they laughed at me when I picked it up and put it in my pocket and they laughed at me and they said our money began to be in the millions and billions just to be able to buy a loaf of bread. We, it, we burn it. That's why we went to American money because the American money is the safest money in the world. They don't even hardly recognize the South African ran or the English pound. But the American money, they had their own money. I, I went there and it used to be five Zim dollars for one American dollar. But because of corruption, the Zimb Zimbabwe money, they don't even print it anymore. Could that happen to America? Yes, with our debt. We are a debtor nation to China. We owe China, I think, close to one trillion dollars. What's going to happen if those countries begin to come and want their money? What's it going to do to our dollar? Those are some of the questions. Which candidate has a plan for getting our debt down? Which candidate has a plan to reduce our taxes? One candidate does have a plan to reduce taxes. One candidate has said that they want to raise one trillion in taxes. Do you know which one it is? Do you know which one it is? What candidate has the best plan for jobs? What candidate has the best plan for protecting us and the border. One candidate has come out and it's been revealed that they want open borders. One candidate wants to build a wall. Do you know who it is? One candidate wants to rebuild our a military because our military is the lowest since World War I. And China and Russia are building up their military. Which candidate has a plan for us to rebuild our military? The next president will nominate two to three Supreme Court justices. The next president will nominate two to three Supreme Court justices. One candidate has already come out with their list of conservative or constructionist judges to be, be put on the Supreme Court, the other candidate has not. Let me give you the ages of the Supreme Court justices. As of last year, there's eight justices right now in the Supreme Court. Judge uh, Scalia died earlier this year, as you know. Listen to their ages. 80, 68, 83, 78, 61, 66, 62, and 56. The next Supreme Court, the next president that's going to pick two or three, what kind of Supreme Court justices do we want in there? If you would have told me eight years ago that our present president and the Supreme Court working, that marriage no longer is between a man and a woman, five unelected Supreme Court justices said to America that marriage no longer is between a man and woman. That was decided by the Supreme Court. Did you know that? They decided. They told America, we don't recognize marriage anymore between a man and a woman. And we haven't seen the hell that that's going to cause. Pretty soon people are going to say, why can't I marry two people? Why can't we do this? We've already got this. Who are you to define marriage? We've started down that slippery slope. We need someone to put Supreme Court justices in that will uphold the Constitution, not rewrite it. Because if you're afraid about 
The second amendment, which is to be able to defend yourself with your guns. Who, def- who believes what? And remember, the Supreme Court is going to make that decision. Several years from now, they could make such restrictions on guns and they know who has them. Now they, I, I, the gun that I have, I had to fill out all that information. What if they passed a law that you can't carry a gun and you can't carry ammo anymore? You think that, ah, really? They just changed marriage. What about Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act? Let me just call it that. We were told by our elected officials that this was going to help people get insurance and it was going to save us at least $2,500 per family. Has that happened? The next president is going to be able to use his influence with Congress to rewrite those laws that would be favorable for all of us. There's some good things about it, especially if you've got preconditions of your health. There's some good things about it, but there's some terrible things that it's just costing people so much money. How many of you have been affected in a negative way by the Affordable Care Act? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. How many of you have tried to get insurance that you were promised you could get and it has been just a nightmare for you? Raise your hand. Okay. It's important for the next Supreme Court justice. If we've been called by God to pray for our leaders, if we've been called by God to pray for our leaders and submit to our leaders, should not we have a voice in that with our vote? Think about it. I've been called to pray for my leaders. I've been called to submit to my leaders and obey the laws of the land. And especially as a Christian, for us to be salt and light in our society. You know that's what God's called all of us to be, salt. What does salt do? Preserves. Preserves. What does the light do? It shines in the darkness. If all of that is true, don't I have a responsibility to vote and vote with my conscience and vote with all the information that I should have? Come on, talk to me. Yes. So this list that you're going to get is so important. Who is, are we going to vote for to lead us? And there's other things too. Proposition 64, you know what they're wanting to do, what they did in Washington and also in Colorado? Come on, everybody tell me. Do we want this? Do we want marijuana or anyone? It's, it is a door drug. It is a gateway drug. And you talk to the people up in Colorado and I tell you what it has done even to that state. It just robs people of passion to be able to do things because they're so wasted in their brain. They have done scientific studies that people who smoke marijuana consistently, their brain has got some things wrong with them. These are these are doctors, these are scientists. But do we want that in our society? We don't. But that's one of the propositions that we're going to vote on. Do we want marijuana and hemp in our society? And let me tell you this, we need to stand up. There's a whole group of people that got this on the proposition that just want to, why not? The other states have it. But do we just want to open the doors for our children and our grandchildren where people can just escape reality by they're so loaded, wiped out, non-reality, escape? Well, it's a recreational drug, really. Is that all it is? It's an escape drug. And what it'll do for people financially, what it'll do to them, because pretty soon I can't cope unless I have a drag off of a marijuana cigarette. This is reality, folks. There's other things, other propositions on here that you need to study. I'm concerned about my children and my grandchildren. I'm concerned that the liberal media has so perverted 
so many things that it's just a headache to watch TV anymore. Let me tell you this, as your pastor, I believe that God is giving us a chance. God has given us a chance. And let me just say this, with all the stuff that's come out, you know, all the stuff with the emails and, and audio things being recorded, and some of this stuff just makes you sick, and some of this stuff just makes you disgusted, realizing that things have been said and done. I'm going to vote for one reason. You may not even like the guys that are running. Let me tell you why I'm voting. I'm voting for the Supreme Court. That is enough for you to vote. Who will make the decision for the Supreme Court that will either, that will have our laws that we've had or they're going to rewrite the laws? The Supreme Court is enough. Which candidate are you going to vote for? We're becoming more and more like a socialist nation. Carol was telling me just a conversation that now to be politically correct, you can't say father and mother in colleges and schools. You can't say certain words because it might offend somebody. You see where we're going? Our nation needs a revival. Our nation needs to turn back to God. Because we are calling evil good and, and good evil. Like it says in Isaiah. We're becoming that type of people and I really believe it's the doors have been opened. Which candidate will stand up for what is right? Which candidate what platform are you going to believe in and what are you going to vote for? It's so important that you really educate yourself on what's going on. And again, we can get up here and we can say, I don't like either of the two main people. But folks, let me just say this. The Supreme Court is one main reason you should go. The marijuana issue is another reason. There's other people, there's... Uh, the election, we're going to be voting for city council people in this city. There are state senators uh, in this state. There are a lot of propositions. There's a lot of things to vote for just besides president. So the packet is for you to take your time and read. There's a couple articles in here by two pastors. One of them is Adrian Rogers who passed away a number of years ago. The buying call to political engagement. This is a good one, but this one here is the one. Carol and I just got back Thursday. We went up to, uh, last Sunday we left here, went to Las Vegas, spend the night with the other apostolic members, Dave and Vivian Cunningham, Elver and Lori Mendenhall, and Dave and Cindy Shad, and Carol and I were part of the Apostolic Council of RIM, and we went into Cedar City, uh, Utah, and we met leaders from Utah as well as um, um, Nevada ministered to people I didn't even know. And this article we took with us, and I had us reproduce it, it's by Pastor Jim Garlow from Skyline uh, Church down in San Diego. And this was written back um, on August the 11th. And I want you to read this. And it says, if you're on the fence about your vote, this pastor clarifies how the very future of America is at stake. Please read this. Please study what I'm giving you. And vote. A lot of things in here. And the guy has written on this one, vote your belief. No candidate is perfect. They're all flawed, just like we're flawed. But I do believe that there are some people that will stand up for some basic rights that we need to not lose and preserve and keep.